Last week we talked about how uh, we as a church talk about what's important. And so today we're talking about something very important. We're, we're talking about how are we transformed and how we, we see the world. In Romans 12, Paul talks uh, to the church at Rome saying to them, Be transformed by the renewing of your minds. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed in your mind so that how we think, how, how we believe, what we do only makes sense in the light of following Jesus Christ. And so here we are to be transformed this day. And what we're going to talk about, the important matter at hand, is how do we handle all the things for which we give thanks? How do we handle all the blessings that God gives us? We read in the psalm that we, uh, we feast on the abundance of what God sets before us. We read in James that every good thing, every generous act, everything we receive that is beautiful and wonderful and good is from God. That's what makes it so good is that it is from God. And so for us to, to think about how we receive these good things and how we might use them, I have a bit of a thought experiment for the, for the day. I have a bit, uh, something I'd like us to imagine. I'd invite you to imagine a world that's just like the world we have with one difference. I want you to imagine the world we live in with one key change. I want you to imagine that when you go out the door today, I want you to imagine that next time you are paid or next time you get a retirement check or Social Security or whatever you get, that instead of getting cash or a check, I want you to imagine that instead you are paid in apples. Can you imagine that with me? You walk out and next time you're given a check, you are given apples. And that is what we use as a, a currency here. And so, you get paid, and here's your paycheck for the month. Let me line these out for you. One month's pay. And here we have ten apples. Now what do you start doing with these apples? Same thing you have to do with money today, right? One apple pays for your rent or your mortgage. Pretty strong currency, isn't it? But this pays for your, your rent or your mortgage. And then this apple, what do you do with this apple? Got to pay for your car, don't you? Your car payment, car insurance, gas, maybe even an oil change. Student debts, anyone? Student loans? That's what I'm paying on. So this apple goes to uh, Uncle Sam to pay for my education. This apple, well, you know, you need to save. And so you go to the, the bank and you take them your apple and they take that apple and they slice it up and they dehydrate it and they put it in a little box with all of your other apples that you're saving for a rainy day. And, and so you, you save an apple. Let's see. This apple, what else do you got to pay for? Bills, right? Heating, utility bills, cell phone. It's amazing to me that we pay so much for cell phones. This, but yeah. God, give your apple to Verizon. And so you go through all these apples and you've got to spend each one, one at a time. And that's how we, we spend our, our apples. Now this is the first apple I took out of the bag. This is the apple that, that was the first apple I had. And you might know the story of, of what... Uh, Abraham does with the first apple he has. When Abraham goes, when his brother Lot is uh, captured and abducted, his brother is taken away and, and Abraham is able to go and to free him. And on his way back from freeing his brother Lot, he runs into a priest. Melchizedek is his name. It means king of righteousness, Melchizedek. And, and he offers the first apple, the first of, of the ten apples to, tell Mil to Melchizedek saying, this is what I offer to God to say thank you. Now, how we understand offering to God does change over time because it's not, th this, that's the first time that we really see offerings to God like this. And uh, there are other times in the Bible where sometimes you're giving the first fruit, sometimes you're paying a temple tax, sometimes you, you're giving a guilt offering or a grain offering. I mean, there's a lot of different offerings we read of in Scripture, but this, the first of the ten, the one out of ten, the tithe, that's the thing that we read of first in, in the Bible about offerings. And, and this is what we come back to again and again. But let's be honest. 
we don't live in the world of Abraham, do we? Life is different now, and, and you know, this is the, the, the apple that God would ask, but you know, I got things to do, right? I got things I'd like to do. I'd really like to take my family on vacation. And God likes family, doesn't he? So, good apple. So, I gotta take my family on vacation. And then, you know, Black Friday's coming up. I like to be able to have my friends over. And God likes fellowship, right? We should have be fellow. I should be able to invite you all over. And if I'm gonna invite you over, I should have a nice TV. So I need to get that flat screen for 30% off. And so a little bit of that. My car is not very dependable. I should so really start putting some aside for a new car. And I really do like to eat out. I like to eat out with y'all, right? Bring y'all out to eat, go out to Gordo's, have a good bite to eat. And that, that's important, to be able to gather as Christians eat together. It really is a great apple. And once we pay for all the things that just sort of come up, unexpected bill, you didn't see that coming, what happens? Well, I'll tell you what happens. Statistically speaking, American give, Americans give 2% of their apples. That's one-fifth. So about that. That's how much, when the plates get tossed around, that's, that's what's put in the plate. 2%. You know, and I think that's a shame. And I think it saddens God greatly. And here's why. Because what can you do with that? Not much, right? Not much at all. If we all put in our little chunks of apples, a little chunk here, a little chunk there, that's really not, can't do much with that. However, if we all put in an, a, the full apple, the first apple, you put in your apple, I put in my apple, you start getting these apples put together, then you have a plate of apples, and what can you do with a plate full of apples? You can make a pie. <laughs> and I gotta tell you, if I had to choose between having an apple and baking a pie with you, this is a nice snack. This is dessert. I'd much rather have dessert. And I think that's what, what happens. I, I think that God is saddened for the things that don't happen because we don't give the full apple and we can't bake pies together. Or not as many pies, or not as big as pies. And, and I think we know that this is how we work together. What, what's, if you think of the finest moments in your life, think of the moments that you wouldn't trade for anything. I'll, I'll give you an example in my life. The, one of the moments I would not trade for anything was a moment in 2001 when I performed with a jazz band at um, MMEA down at Tantara, Missouri Music Educators Association. And, and it was a room full of musicians. And, and I was there with 20 other jazz musicians. And we played. And that's not quite the right verb. But I'm really at a loss to tell you what we did. Because we got up there and we, we made music and it was great. And to this day, I start humming those tunes and it just was amazing. One of the best moments of my life. And, it, and that pie was possible because I took my apple and I worked. I worked that music. I, I, I didn't need to look at the music because I had played it so often. I just, I just knew it. And that, the other 20 people in that group, we all sacrificed and played and played until we came together and made something beautiful, tasty, something I'm never going to forget. Think about the best moments in your life. If, if you've been in major sports teams and, and how you came together, you think, think about um, family, right? Anyone ever have a kid by themselves? Is it even possible to have a kid by yourself? If, if you think, I mean, you see all these things on Facebook. Post if your kids are everything to you. Kids are amazing. By definition, you cannot conceive a kid by yourself. You cannot raise a kid by yourself. It's just not possible. The best things in life, I believe, happen when people come together and give their apple and start making pies. And I think that's the truth about when we gather as a church, too. When we start giving our apples together, things can start to happen that we would never have imagined. We all start giving our apples, and y'all ever been in the food pantry in the basement of the... the who, 
Y'all need to go down there sometime because what, if, if I was going to make a pie, if everyone's going to give an apple, I'd tell you what type of pie I'd make. I'd make a whole new food pantry because every time you walk down there, it's kind of dingy. And I would love to have a brand new food pantry for Sullivan County. I would love for us to make a pie, and I'd, I'd love for that pie to be an amazingly expanded kitchen. Can I get an amen? I knew I could on that. <laughs> You know, if, if we were all giving our, our apples together, there are things that we can do that we cannot even begin to imagine right now. And that's not just true of this church. That is true of, of Christians worldwide. When, when we all are giving our apples, we can do things like eradicate polio. You know, polio is coming back in some parts of the world. We can do things like eradicate malaria. We can do things like fund micro-businesses across the entire continent of Africa so that, so that it, it ceases to be a developing nation and being developed because we gave them the tools they needed. We could make it, if we as Christians gave the apple, the first apple, the full 10%, we could make it so that there would be no refugees that went without food or clothing or something to, or something to eat, a place to go. We can make it so that, that disaster is there was always someone there to give a hand. That's the things that are possible when all Christians across the world give an apple. We start making pies together. There's one more thing about giving an apple. Because what's in the middle of an apple? Yep, there's some seeds in here. A lot harder to find the seeds here than at Green City. Yep, there's some seeds. There's some seeds in here. And we start putting our apples in, we get some seeds. We're saying that we don't just believe that there is something God can do that's good today. We're saying that God has plans for the future. Because you start planting seeds, you're saying that there's a future here. We're gathering to tuck point this church, right? Are we tuck pointing this church because we believe God's going to do something today? Yeah. But we're also tuck pointing this entire church because we believe that we're not the end. We're tuck pointing this church because we believe this church is going to be here, not just tomorrow, not just next month, not just next year, but 30 years from now, 60 years from now, that we plant these seeds with what we offer today, and there will be people here worshiping Jesus Christ 30, 60, 100 years from now because of the seeds we are offering right now. And so I'm going to invite you today to consider how you use your apples. It's something we need to do on occasion. Olivia and I just did it ourselves. We, uh, the, Olivia's making a little bit more, more money this year than last year, so uh, we're giving a bigger apple this year. We just increased how much we're giving. It was time. And I invite you to, to do the same, to sit down and figure out what apple are you giving? And, and, and what, what do you need, need to do to, ma to make that, that happen? And um, I'd invite you to do that. And if you sit down and do the math, and I hope it comes up with a weird number. Because I think what often happens is, is we, uh, we give a nice round number. And, 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 you know, just do the math. And if it ends up being that you're going to give a check for $73.58, great. A nice random number. I'd love to see a lot more random numbers show up in, in the offering plate because that shows that we're, we're doing this math. And, and I'd propose lining up how we are paid with how we tithe because I'll, I'll tell you the challenge. When we try to give weekly and we miss a week or we get off a week, we try to keep, just, you, whenever you get a paycheck, you give the first apple off that paycheck and then you're done. And if you have to pass the plate the rest of the month, eh, whatever. And this is an act of faith. Why? This is an act of trust, right? This is not something that always comes naturally. If you had told me back when I was 22, having just met, uh, I was 21 when I met Olivia, if you had told me that, that I was going to trust her with all of my money and with my future and everything I owned, I would have said, you know, she's nice, but I just met her last month. Let me learn to trust her to show up when she said she's going to show up for coffee, and then we'll do what's next, right? And I think there's the same thing with, with us. Why, why don't we all give fully? Well, we have to learn how to trust. We, I had to learn to trust Olivia with, with, to show up when she said she was going to show up. Then, then I had to learn to trust her when we got married. And, and I had to trust her to put her name on all of my bank accounts. And then they were our bank accounts. And then after that, trust her to, to raise a kid together. Because once you do that, 
you're in it for the long haul, right? And so trust is something that grows over time and it grows as you test it. It grows as you push it. It grows as you take chances you have not taken before. And so I invite you to consider if, if you've given 2%, 4%, whatever you've given before, take another step. Ask God, can I trust you to provide, even if I give a little bit more of this apple, see what happens. See whether it works out. If you've learned to trust God with some things, learn to trust God with bigger things. Learn to trust God with what we offer. And when we pass the plate today, I invite you to take your time with it. I want to close with this. I want to ask you, when you pass the plate today, I want, you to, I want to ask you to take that plate and just take a minute and hold it. And don't, no one rush each other. Allow each other a minute just to take it and hold it and, and realize that when you pass this plate, when you put your apple in it, you're not just doing it as an act of thanksgiving. You're not just doing it as a way to build trust that God will provide. You're also doing it as a way to plant seeds such that this continues. People follow Jesus Christ here in Milan long after we're gone. Amen.